chapter 3 verse 11 says he makes everything beautiful in his time. Also he has set eternity in the heart of every man. He inhabits eternity. It's in you. We sang that song. Open our eyes that we may see the unseen. All of Isaiah is pointing to the internal, the Christ in you. Babylon is that fight within us. The Antichrist, the beast, is that fight to overcome. That his spirit may have the preeminence. throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest where my spirit can rest? The spirit of the Lord rested upon him. Where is the place of my rest? For all these things have my hand made and all these things have been saved for. But to this will I look was a poor and of a humble and a contrite spirit and a trembleth at my word. And then you go on in Isaiah 66 and you see the birthing of the man-child, Christ in you. Isaiah 40. It's all pointing to the internal. Open our eyes that we may see the unseen. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. A king of glory to come in to have it. To have this place of preeminence where his spirit can rest upon. Who are the sons who are led by the spirit? <laughs> David was led, and led into this revelation as he was anointed by the spirit. And in Psalm 95, he says, Oh, come, let us sing in the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. Christ, the rock. Let us come before his presence. Let's come before his face. Is singing. His face is in you. His face is in you. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. His face is in you. David is speaking of an inward thing. Let us come before his face with singing and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king 
above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills are his. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands formed the dry earth, us. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, come unto me. See, Jesus, in Matthew 16, 28, when he said, come unto me, he was speaking of the deeper of him and us being yoked to that. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts in unbelief. Open our eyes to the unseen. He inhabits eternity. I dwell in the high and holy place in thy, my sanctuary in you, the eternity in you. With the humble and the contrite who will give preeminence to my spirit. And my spirit can rest there and that our soul may find its rest. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. I said the provocation, the day of temptation of wilderness, where your fathers tested me, proved me, saw my works. Four years long was I grieved. With that generations. So they have not known my ways, my ways, the way of righteousness, the turning to behold me within. The way of holiness coming out from the world and being with him. weary and heavy laden come unto me and you shall find rest for your souls for I am meek and lowly in heart he says my yoke is easy it's the Greek word Christos for Christotes it is my yoke is goodness it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's his yoke that breaks every yoke. He's talking about yoked to him within us. My yoke is the anointing. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? See, righteousness is beholding the Christ within. Unrighteousness is living out here. David said, I will behold your face in righteousness turning within. I will be satisfied when I awaken with your likeness. What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? The Spirit came in and lit that lamp within you. As John 1 says, that he coming into the world lights every man. As his spirit became one with you, he lit the lamp within you to bring forth the light of the revelation of his love, the revelation of who you are. But we must turn. We must behold him within. <clears throat> what communion has light with darkness? What concord has Christ? with Belial, Antichrist. 
What part has the unbeliever with the believer? What agreement has the temple, the naos, the sanctuary, the holy place where he dwells? What agreement has the sanctuary of God with idols? For you are the temple, the naos, the sanctuary, the holy, the holy of holies. For you are the temple of God, as God has said, I will dwell in them. See, this is the yoke. I will dwell in them. Do not be yoked together, but be yoked to me within you. shall be my children. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Come in and be with me. Behold me. How do we love him? We behold him within us. We make that place within us. We sanctify ourselves. We come into hiding with him. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers. Shut the doors about thee and hide yourself. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in a field. It's in you. Which when a man finds it, he hides him for joy. He goes and sells all he has and buys that field to take possession, to be yoked. yoke that breaks every yoke. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters. Wherefore, having these promises, dearly brother, let us cleanse ourselves with all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness, coming into the beauties of holiness to behold the Lord within us, who we really are. That's how we love him, to remove all those idols that obscure who he is, which is who we are. That we may be yoked we sing the song, walk with me, and he's saying, walk with me, I'm in you. Be yoked by my spirit to me. Behold my face within. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you. That's a face within you, shining upon you. That's the seven spirits of God, the lamp, shining upon your heart. As you're yoked to this goodness, this anointing that's shining its light of love and revelation upon your heart until the day dawn and the day star arises upon your heart. You don't have to look here, look there. The kingdom is in you. A high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. I have set eternity in the heart of every man. This is eternal life that you may know him. Come into union. our part to come into the beauties of holiness. Will we turn? Will we turn? Or does it, does, does it have to become stronger to get us to turn? <laughs> right. This is the secret place, the secret of his face. It's in you. In Psalm 91 says, 
as they have set their love upon me here you prepared this place in our heart to fellowship to be yoked to him because they have set their heart upon me therefore will I deliver them I will set them on high because they have known my name when they call upon me I will answer them I will be with them in trouble I will deliver them and honor them or glorify them with long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation his goodness by the anointing of the spirit we can't even repent that's why it's seek him while he may be found while he is drawing you seek him turn from this world and seek him within turn from all these distractions while he may be found if we continue to laugh, then then it just comes stronger then he will he will allow himself not to be found for a season so that we will be brought low. Because he dwells with the humble and the contrite. That he might revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite ones. Thank you. 